And then also, I noticed that you're one of the most fit people we've ever had on the show. So talk to me about one how- One of the most or the most? <laughs> probably one of the most, Thank if you, not man. the most. Right I mean, it's, I appreciate you might that. be tied with Ed Milet, so it's a good competition. <laughs> he but, is uh, in amazing shape. Yeah. Absolutely. He, uh, yeah, he, he's in great shape. But I wanted to ask you, how important has fitness been in your life as it relates to business? I mean, do you feel like you would have been able to do as much as you have been if it weren't for fitness? How important is fitness for you in relation to life? It's, it's, it's everything. And honestly, it, it's not just because, obviously, as the CEO of a nutrition company and, and something that, you know, we're promoting a healthy lifestyle, obviously, you have to lead by example. I mean, if I was selling, like, marble tables for a living, I would still maintain the same level of fitness that I currently do because by having that discipline as it pertains to my diet, having that discipline as it pertains to my workouts, like it not only allows me to like, like look better, right? That's like the third or fourth like positive consequence of living a healthy lifestyle. It makes me feel better. And by optimizing my life to, to, to feel good, it gives me the ability to like to, 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 do, to do more shit, to do more <laughs> shit yeah, at yeah. a higher level. Yeah. I mean, look, you're not always gonna fucking feel like doing the shit that you need to do to, to get ahead. But the reality of it is, if you could increase the occurrences and increase like the, 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 the level of your performance, the level of execution, if you could make yourself more uh, efficient like, w would you do that? Like, red pill, blue pill. Red pill says yes, but like the red pill is going to the gym. The red pill is, is, is eating good consistently. Honestly, like your whole fucking day like could be made dramatically better by starting your day off with a very hard workout, eating the right things, and just like going from there. It's all about momentum, man. And like when you work out, there's some, there's some real shit that goes on in your brain. There's a lot of chemical, a lot of feel good chemicals that are released, <laughs> but it's like those chemicals, like you have to earn the right to feel good. Mm, you you, you absolutely that. do. And, and that's with everything. And like with fitness, I mean, that gives you a very like easy opportunity to earn that right. And doing it at the beginning of the day sets your day up for the win because you're gonna take that, that momentum, you take how good you feel, that energy. And you know, most people don't have any energy because they're not working out, if that makes any kind of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, You know what I'm sense. saying? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, it, it's super important, man. If you don't use it, you lose it, yeah. It's super important. The, the quality of your life is heavily dictated by the quality of the foods that you eat. That's a fact, that's an undeniable fact. And uh, you know, of course I'm gonna say that, right? Though I'm the CEO of this, this, this meal prep <laughs> company. Right, but yeah. it's like, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the God's honest truth. And, and so many people are, are conditioned to eating shit every day and they've gotten used to this like substandard level of, of, of how they feel and this substandard level of performance and it's become the operating norm. Mm. When if they just took the time, created the time and invested in their health and their quality of life and their confidence, every, I mean literally every fucking area, whether you're talking about work, I mean being more efficient in the workplace, being able to be more focused, having better mental clarity, the quality of your relationships, with your kids, not only are you gonna set a better example for your children, like you'll be able to keep up with them, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're a, a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, I see this all the time, like, you know, they get in a relationship or they get married and like they let themselves go, they gain a bunch of weight. And it's like, dude, like that's that's not fair to your to your partner. Like, not only are you gonna lose that flame, like keep in mind, like that person, your significant other, they fell in love with like the bit, like, in shape version of you, not the lethargic, like fat, like tired, out of breath <laughs> downgrade. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just a fact. That's and a fact, I think yeah. people lose sight of this and they wonder why like their their, their relationships lose passion. Um, it, it, it literally, it, the, the benefits of fitness, the benefits of living an active, healthy lifestyle, working out, eating good, it, it literally will change your entire life. What's your best advice to people out there who maybe aren't physically fit right now? Maybe they, you know, I'm sure you've seen it. They try to get in shape. It doesn't work. They get a trainer. Mm -hmm. They try this mm -hmm. gym. They try that gym. Mm -hmm. New Year's resolution. Yeah. They keep falling off the horse yeah. and they're getting older and older maybe and just getting discouraged. What would be your best advice to somebody who's been trying to work out and just stuck in a rut to actually build that momentum to make it a lifestyle? Yeah. You got you to gotta let the past go. Although you may have failed in the past, it doesn't mean you're a failure. In fact, 
I would make the argument that if you failed in the past, that's actually leverage. That gives you the opportunity to go about it a different way. You now know what doesn't work. You've proven that you know what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So now you have the tactical advantage to go into it with a new mindset, a new perspective. And honestly, I don't wanna say a new game plan because I think the reality of it is a lot of people don't stay consistent with their fitness goals. A lot of people uh, have, have, have been unable to follow through with what it is they were once so excited about doing because after a short period of time, they stop doing the shit that they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They stop doing the things they committed to do. And they start doing it some of the time and they get frustrated when they don't see results. You gotta take responsibility over the fact that you didn't do what you said you're gonna do. And you know what, that's okay. That shouldn't, that shouldn't frustrate you at this point. It should actually empower you. You know you didn't do the shit that you need to do, so it's like no mystery. Yeah. So let's go about it differently now and let's go fucking get after it and make shit happen. And you know, all those people out there like that roll their eyes and they hear about people making their New Year's resolutions and dude, like that, that's, that's weak. Don't do that. Any opportunity that we can have to set a goal, whether it's New Year's resolution, your birthday, Halloween, Labor Day, Memorial Day, fuck all those things. Leverage that. Leverage that. Yeah. And understand that when you commit to something, when you set a goal, like that is a commitment that you're making to yourself and you have a responsibility to honor your commitments 100% of the time and get up and do the shit that you need to do even and especially when you don't fucking feel like it. How about when it comes to setting goals? Is that something you set short-term, long-term? What have you found works for you when it comes to setting goals? It's a really good question, man. And I'm gonna be completely honest. I did not start setting goals till the end of, to the beginning of 2016, which again, this was right around the time I started making all these changes. I didn't right. start like planning my day or writing goals to the end of 2016. And 2016. You, you follow like a daily structure, day-to-day, -day, everyday routine, or does it Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, the there's, cer there's certain things that I do every, every single day, and I follow as far as like waking up at a certain time, making sure I work out. Um, but you know, when I'm scheduling my day, I, I have certain tasks that I put that are not the same. I mean, there are certain days that I check on certain things, but those aren't really things that get scheduled because they're part of my routine. The things that I schedule, are the things that are gonna actually move me closer to the next level. The things that are gonna help me like, you know, like climb and, and yeah, get Yeah, move better. the needle. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, structure is super important. And honestly, uh, as an entrepreneur, like, dude, that's the most important thing because, you know, you don't answer to anybody necessarily unless you're, you know, in a, in a situation where you have like a board or whatever. Right. But when you're starting up the first several years, like you are your own boss and you have to give yourself that structure and discipline. And, uh, you know, setting goals was, something that I never did until the beginning of 2016. And 2016 was a breakout year for me. Um, financially with the business, a lot of other things started happening. And then, you know, I was like, wow, like imagine that. Like, I, so I can't sit here and tell you that the, 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 the growth our company has seen in the last three years, which is over 500%, is a, a direct byproduct of me like starting to write goals. But I also can't sit here and tell you that it's not. You absolutely have to have goals. If you don't have goals, I mean, like it's easy to go nowhere if you don't know like where you're fucking going. And then that's <laughs> unfortunately yeah, like yeah. What, that's unfortunately what most people do. And it's like they get up and they think that like working hard is enough. Like I'm working hard. It's like, dude, first of all, working hard, that's like the price of admission. Everybody's working hard, man. Working hard is the bare minimum, and that is the perspective that we need to have because like it's a very competitive world out there whether you choose to admit it or not, I mean, like there's a game being played out there and you have to do the things that you need to do to separate yourself from everyone else. And it's very easy to get overwhelmed with the details of the day or the sure. stress of the hour or whatever bullshit. Or the like, email, the thing, yeah. Absolutely. There's always some thing that's gonna happen, which is why you need to have those goals on paper, write them down every fucking day and, and honestly like, the funny, the really funny thing about that is like, you know, you, you don't actually have to know exactly what you have to do to, when you know what you want and, 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 and you, you know, you state it, you write it down and when you're writing it down, you're actually visualizing, right? Visualizing important, obviously nobody has time for that. People, right. But when you're writing your goals down, that's actually a visualization technique. So like give yourself the competitive edge, right? When, you're, when you know exactly what you want, 
it's funny, man. Like the universe and like your your subconscious, it has a very funny way of just bringing those things together without you even realizing it. So true. So you true. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because there's been a lot of times where I've been like, like, like you know, writing these goals. I'm like, fuck me. Like I'm. I'm doing all this shit, like and nothing is happening. And then all of a sudden I'm like, right. holy shit, like that stuff that I was like stressed out that I was having to do, no, I didn't even realize that that not only was taking care of what I consciously knew it was taking care of, but that was actually helping me get towards this goal. It's like, right. what a fucking concept. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? So running your goals down is important, man. And, uh, and setting deadlines too, right? 100%, it's part of the work. Like when you set a goal, you're obviously, we know that there's gonna be a lot of work that gets put into it. What you have to understand is writing your goals down every day is part of that work. If you can't even do that, save your time, save your energy, and don't, don't even bother setting a goal because you'll ultimately just be left with disappointment and a, a painful association towards the goal setting process, which a lot of people have as it pertains to New Year's resolutions. The people that like, you know, talk shit about other people or roll their eyes when they see the, like the little memes and, and, and all that, they feel that way because they have failed in the past. And the reason they failed in the past is because they didn't set, they set a goal because society said, oh, let's, let's set a goal and everybody else sets a goal. And then what else, what does everybody else do with the, after a short period of time? They fall off. They rest on their laurels or they quit altogether. So it's easy to give yourself a pass and let yourself off the hook. Right. When everybody else is doing it, right? Right, absolutely. That. I mean, but the question I think, you know, people need to ask themselves is like, do you want to be like everyone else? And and that's that's a that's a question we need to, to ask and, and, and when answering, be very honest. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now because every week we bring you the very best in personal development content, interviews, and insight to help inspire you to take your life and your dreams and make them a reality. And also, if you want to know how to book dream guests the same way I have, you can check the link below for my top three secrets. So if you have a podcast or a show or whatever it is and you want to collaborate with them, if you click that link below, I'll give you those top three secrets to help you get in touch with anybody. And also, don't forget that the Passionate View is available on media platforms as well. So you can subscribe to the podcast. And until next time, thank you for being one of the passionate few.